How's it going, everybody? Ed Ricker here, out at the field on a chilly uh, but beautiful sunny afternoon. And this is kind of a beginner's guide, a getting started tutorial, how to fly the Mavic Mini as if you just got out of the box and haven't flown it yet. We're gonna go through a couple processes and make sure that you can take off and land safely. So we're gonna get started with the DJI Mavic Mini here, and this is the Fly More Combo, and this will apply to you even if you don't have the Fly More Combo. Download the DJI Fly app to whatever display device you plan to use with this drone. Not the DJI Go 4 app, that's for the other drones like the Mavic 2 and the Spark and stuff. Now I've taken all the stickers off, I've flown this a few times, but basically you're gonna have to take off all the plastic pieces and everything and uh, power it on for the first time at the house, connect it to your phone and update the firmware. That's very important to be able to get the firmware up to date before you take it out to the field. Otherwise, you're gonna be spending precious time and maybe precious uh, data on your data plan on your cell phone trying to get this thing up to date with the latest firmware, which is very important to do. You also wanna charge your battery or batteries at the house. Um, of course, that makes it a lot easier if you have the Fly More combo with the charger hub, but either way, you don't wanna to go to the field with a half-charged battery and then spend most of that half-charge trying to update your firmware and then you can't even fly. To take the gimbal cover off, you take your thumb right there, press up on that tab, it lifts up and then right off like that. Unfold the front two legs first and then fold out the back two legs, just like so. On the back is where your battery compartment is, so just lift that up and ensure you've got your battery in there. This thing is so light that, uh, you know, it's deceiving. You're like, is that battery really in there? Well, yes it is. Uh, also make sure you got your micro SD card. If your Mavic Mini didn't come with the micro SD card, what I use is the SanDisk Extreme uh, 64 gigabyte, and that actually holds a lot of footage. The Mavic Mini doesn't actually shoot 4K, so quite a bit of footage fits onto a 64 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. Now here's your controller, and you unfold the arms just like that, and that's how your cell phone is gonna be held in. What I'm using today is a Google Pixel 4 XL. I do have to take the case off my Pixel 4 XL just to be able to fit it inside the remote control arms. That's fine, I don't mind doing that. You should have a bunch of these micro USB to lightning or micro USB or USB-C connections that are about three inches long inside the box. Um, since Google Pixel uses micro uh, or actually USB-C, that's what I'm gonna be using. And we connect it right there on the side. So the micro USB port goes right in there. And then the USB-C snuggles inside the controller arm right there. Your joystick thumbsticks are hidden right underneath and so you just screw them right in. And now, fit your phone into the controller arms, like so, and then just make sure that you get that USB-C or whatever connection you have plugged into your phone, and make sure you don't, you're not like bending it, torquing it, you know, you don't wanna break this connection off in your phone. That'd be a really bad way to get started. Flip the antenna up, and uh, you're about ready. The power button is right here. You press it once and then again and hold it for about three seconds and it'll chime. And now the uh, remote control is powered on. On the bottom of the Mavic Mini, there's a power button as well. So then press that and then again and hold it for about three seconds. And you wanna put this on the ground normally to let it uh, initiate, but I just wanna show you, everything is kinda twitching and moving around and that's normal. The gimbal's gonna start twitching a little bit. The motors twitch a little bit, but put this on flat ground or your table or your desk or something, and then you can uh, start updating your firmware. Now that both devices are powered on and your cell phone is on, go ahead and open up that DJI Fly app. So everything up until now can still be done at the house or with a Wi-Fi connection before you go out to the field for the first time. DJI is gonna want you to create an account if you don't already have one, otherwise sign in and activate your device. It's at this point that you have 48 hours to purchase the DJI Care Refresh plan, which enables you to get a very cheap replacement twice if you crash the drone and break it or something. Um, it does not cover complete loss, like if you lost it in a lake or on the top of a mountain and you can't retrieve it, but if you can retrieve it and it's broken, DJI will definitely replace it for a much cheaper, like 10% of what you originally purchased. I always go for the DJI Care Refresh and I've had to use it twice now, and I definitely have it on this DJI Mavic Mini. Check the link in the video description to the DJI Care Refresh plan. Now, if we're still at the house with a Wi-Fi connection, let's go ahead and update that firmware. It's gonna show on the top left of the screen that a firmware update is available, and it's strongly suggested, and in some cases, uh, required for you to update that firmware in order to fly the first time. 
So now that we've activated the device, we have uh, updated the firmware, we have recharged our batteries, let's go out to the field. So welcome to the fresh air. Now I've chosen a nice open area right here uh, to start flying. There are a few power lines, but they're on the other side of the street, so we should be all right. Also, we have some trees. We'll just be careful of those. We'll mainly be flying and taking off and landing around here. I will be using a freewheel gear landing pad so that we can put them over the leaves and we don't have to worry about leaves getting up in the props. The remote controller is on, the drone is on, our phone is on. We're going to go into the DJI Fly app. And if all is well and good, we have a Go Fly option on the lower right of the screen. We're going to click Go Fly and we have our view. There you go. There's my camera and the, the power lines we have to avoid. All right, so we're gonna put this right back down. We're gonna do a little analysis of what's on the screen here. On the left is our mode, which is P, which is positioning, which is a good one to start out in. Uh, it also says takeoff permitted. Now, if we click on takeoff permitted, it says pre-flight check is normal. That's a good thing. Um, sometimes it'll say that a calibration of the compass is required. And in that case, we can definitely do that. Um, I'm gonna scroll down and show return to home altitude is 180 feet. Now, that's not default. I think default's lower. But in order for me to, to return to home safely around these trees that I'm, that I'm standing underneath, you really wanna have a return to home altitude that makes sense for your environment. So 180 feet is gonna clear the buildings, um, the power lines, the trees, anything around me when I click return to home. Max altitude is 396. Technically it's 400 in the uh, United States. The FAA limits us to 400 feet, but 396 is as close as I can get with this little slider. Uh, max distance, that's, that's default, I think. Um, I don't plan to go any further than 1,000 feet, especially today. Storage location is SD card. We have our 64 gigabyte, technically 58.7 gigabytes uh, available in there. If we need to format our card, that's where we could do it. And we have three hours and 30 minutes of recording time remaining. I told you 64 gigabytes is more than enough. We're gonna slide from the left to get out of that menu. On the top right, we have our GPS. Um, we have our radio link connection. We have our battery, which is at 90, because I've had this powered on for a second talking. Um, also on the, on the upper right is a dot, dot, dot little button. We can click that and we can go into our settings. We got safety, control, camera, transmission, and about. Safety was very similar to our previous menu, but it also incorporates uh, an update for home point. So if this is flying already, we can update our home point to a specific location. And sensors, so IMU and compass. If compass did not say normal, we would calibrate it. Of course, IMU as well. Um, I'm gonna show you how to calibrate the compass even though it says normal. We're gonna, we're gonna do it anyway. It says keep near of metal or objects with an electrical charge and ensure the distance between the aircraft and the ground is around 1.5 meters. And it says to rotate the aircraft 360 degrees horizontally. So we're going to rotate it horizontally until the menu changes. There it goes. Now it says rotate it 360 vertically. And ah, it's complete, nice. All right, calibration successful. Let's go back into that screen and just show our advanced settings. Um, this is how we emergency stop the propellers. We move both control sticks toward the bottom inner or outer corners simultaneously to stop the motors. Uh, so if there's ever a problem, you really need to cut the motors, hopefully because you've already crashed, you don't want to do this in the sky, um, then you can do this. Uh, make sure that it says emergency only, however. So tap emergency only and make sure it says emergency only. Anytime means that if you do this particular stick, uh, you know, combination in the sky while you're flying, your drone is gonna fall out of the sky. So emergency only. Let's go back and then go to control. Um, control, here we have our flight modes, which can also be selected uh, on the main screen of the app. But here we have Cinesmooth, Position, and Sport. Position is what we're gonna fly in today. Cinesmooth slows down your drone a little bit to, to create more of a silky smooth motion. Sport mode is if you want to just go as fast as the drone can go and really, you know, test its limits. We're not going to do that today. Select your proper units for measurement. So we're doing Imperial because I'm in the United States. And gimbal mode is default follow mode, which is good. That means if the drone is turning, the gimbal is going to stay horizontal with the horizon. In FPV mode, the gimbal would actually bank and turn as the drone also turns. And uh, that's not really what we want for the type of flying we're doing today. 
Gimbal calibration is a process you can go through if you're having a problem with your gimbal. So if your gimbal is getting a little finicky, tap gimbal calibration. Stick mode is mode two, which is normal. And if you have never flown a drum before, let's stay with mode two. And flight tutorial. So when you first take off, you're gonna to have to go through a flight tutorial. And that's a good thing. Finally at the bottom, connect to aircraft. That's a way we can link our remote control to the drone. That would help if you have bought the drone separately from the remote or you got a new drone through DJI Care Refresh and had to bind it to your existing controller. On the top, let's go to camera. Um, camera size, four x three or 16 by nine. That's for pictures. So if you wanna do a four x three aspect ratio picture, you can select that. A couple of these options you know, come up earlier in that initial menu we brought up. So uh, advanced settings. So here's where we get a little bit more detailed in terms of controlling our camera and our exposure and stuff. I have a video about the histogram and overexposure warnings and stuff. Go ahead and check that video out. It was made a year or two ago. Um, grid lines, you can also um, put little grid lines in your display on your, on your device so you can frame up your image and get better composition, that type of thing. Let's keep auto flicker on auto. Video subtitles, we'll just turn off for now. And then cache when recording, that was on by default. Um, that saves a lower resolution image or, or video to your phone if in case you lost your drone. But I'm going to take that off because I just want everything recorded to the micro SD card, nothing else. Let's go back and then to transmission. Let's keep everything on auto channel mode. And then let's go to about. And so about is how you just check for updates. Um, you can rename your craft. You can find out how many times a battery has been charged, uh, that type of thing. All right, swipe from the left and we get out of that menu. We're almost done, guys. On the middle right, we have our video or our photo options. See that 2.7K option? That's what mine says because I've flown this before, but click on the, that, uh, that little icon right above the record or the shutter button. And here we can select between video, which is 1080 or 2.7K. And you can see the frame rates that are available on each. I'm gonna stick with 2.7K 30. And then um, here's how you can go into your photo options. So single or time shot. And also your quick shots, which you cannot do unless you take off. So that's how you can do your droney or your rocket or your helix or your orbit movements. Uh, that the drone has pre-programmed in its intelligent flight modes. And on the lower right is our exposure settings. Uh, we only really have auto exposure lock and auto exposure under normal video settings. In photo mode, however, we do have the ability to turn off our auto exposure mode and then affect our ISO and our shutter speed. So we have a little bit more control in photo mode than we do in video mode. On the left middle, we have our takeoff button and that's how we're gonna take off. Um, however, I'm gonna go into that that flight tutorial that you'll probably uh, see when you first power on your drone and activate it for the first time. Beginner flight tutorial, approximately 10 minutes. Take off in an open, uncrowded area and turn up your phone volume to hear the prompts, okay. Also ensure the battery level of the aircraft and remote are at least 40% before flying. Ensure the propellers are installed correctly. These four props are not all the same. You have a pair and you have a pair. So these are spinning counterclockwise and these are spinning clockwise and you do get some extra props in your uh, your kit just remember the counterclockwise props have a little black line on the tip whereas the clockwise do not ensure that if aircraft is placed with the rear facing you that helps for orientation so left is left and right is right if the drone's facing me that might be flipped and ensure the remote controller antenna are installed correctly. So you can see how the broad side of the antenna should face the aircraft. Um, you shouldn't have the antenna pointed directly at the aircraft. That actually has the least amount of radio signal quality. So you wanna make sure everything is broadside to the aircraft. Start auto check. Tap the text above to view aircraft auto check results. So that's what we did uh, at the beginning. That's great. Slide out, safety check, complete. Control sticks, tap to open takeoff window, and hold that takeoff button for about two seconds. There we go. We have liftoff, ladies and gentlemen. So it's giving us a couple prompts. It says it wants us to ascend one meter. So with the left stick, move that left stick up, and it'll ascend. Now it wants us to descend one meter. It's just getting us used to the controls 
turn left. So we're going to yaw left with our left thumbstick. And then turn right. Fly forward. So this is our right thumbstick now. We're going to move that up. And that makes us go forward. Fly backward. And then translate left. So we're moving the whole drone through space. Left. Um, how long is it going to take? Okay, there it is. Control aircraft to move right. And translate right. And there we go. Learn how to land. The aircraft will land in its current location. Ensure the landing area is level and free of obstacles. Abort landing in the event of an emergency. Land. Landing. And here it goes. And it's landing right there. Awesome. And that was our first flight. It was short, but it was sweet. Here's a second way to take off. So if we take our left thumbstick and move it down left, right thumbstick, down right, take off. that moves the props. And now all we have to do is just raise that left throttle and it takes off. Press down on that throttle. Keep pressing down and the drone lands. That's a simpler way, but just make sure nothing is, is around. You know, you gotta kinda monitor this when you take off and land, especially landing. Remember, this doesn't have obstacle avoidance around or on top, it just has it on the bottom and, and really only helps for landing purposes. Um, it's not going to avoid obstacles as you're flying around, so just remember that. So I'm gonna take off uh, again, let's do it. Got those props spinning. And I'm going to start recording. So on the right, with that red button, we've started recording. We're going to yaw a little bit to the right. And you can see that our auto exposure has started to expose for those trees. You have a dial right here on your left, kind of like where your index finger would sit. And that's right by the record button as well. And you have your shutter button right there for taking pictures. But that dial is for your gimbal, your gimbal tilt. Turn that dial. I am slowly panning my gimbal down. And I do the opposite, and I'm tilting my gimbal up. How fast that reacts and how fast that comes to a stop uh, is affected in your gimbal settings. Let's go to your gimbal settings. So on the upper right, little dot, dot, dot icon, go to control. And then on the right, as you scroll down, you see gimbal. And on the very right, you see a blue text says advanced. Here's where you can select how fast the gimbal pitch speed is. Uh, the pitch smoothness, and also allow upward gimbal rotation. We're going to turn on upward gimbal rotation, which allows us to tilt the gimbal up further past the horizon. Now we can tilt the gimbal up really high. Well, that's awesome. Uh, 20 degrees, it says. Now I'm going to raise this up, so we're going to throttle up. And uh, I could use some sunglasses right now. <laughs> sunglasses might not be a bad idea to bring on your first flight. Let's go up to about... 100 feet. We're going to yaw left until we see these trees. So check this out. I'm turning my body. I'm, fa I'm facing the drone now. I can still see it. I'm maintaining line of sight. The drone is pointed away from me and I'm facing the drone. This is the best situation. This is the best way to control your drone because you can see it and you also know left and right is not reversed on you because it's not facing you. You know, the, the orientation is perfect. Now, if you look on the bottom of the screen, there's a little half circle thing with a little aircraft symbol, as well as a little symbol in the center, which represents you. So the drone has a compass and the drone knows which way it's pointed, not just where it is in relation to GPS, but which way it's pointed north, south, east, west. So if I yaw with the left thumbstick, left, right, you see the drone knows which way it's pointed. That's very helpful when you're trying to uh, figure out which way to come back or which way the drone's facing if it's too far away to see exactly which way it's turned. Finally, it has a little icon for you in the center, that little circle. If I turn my body, see how the drone looks like it's orbiting me? The drone's not moving, I'm moving. So it knows where the drone is in relation to the controller 
and which way you're pointed. That's actually amazing. That's an awesome feature. I know where the drone is in relation to my body and I can tell, oh, it looks like it's about at uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock. So I know where to look and where to face. Finally, on the lower left, we have our height and our distance. We are 100 feet up and we are 67 feet away. That, that's a really great way to know exactly how high you are uh, in relation to other objects or other drones you might be flying around. So say you're flying with a buddy, you don't want to crash into each other. One of you stay at 150 feet high, one of you stay at 100 feet high, and you'll never run the risk of crashing into each other. The very far lower left, we have our map. So yes, this is how we tap once and find our GPS location. We tap again and we expand that image to show exactly where we are. So we can see our drone orientation. We'll pinch in to show the details. Drone orientation, here I am turning the drone. We're yawing left and right. Here I am turning myself, so you can see my controller is also turning. We have our home point, which is where we took off. If we go into our safety menu, we can update that home point and drag to adjust the position of the home point. So we can drag our home point wherever we want, and that's where the drone is going to uh, return to home. If you want the drone to return to home where the aircraft is, then press the aircraft little icon there. If you want it to return to home where the controller is, press the controller icon. Then it'll land and return to home pretty much right on top of my head. One more option we need to toggle back and forth to show you how to fly. Upper left, it says mode P. Well, that's positioning mode, and we, we already talked about CineSmooth and sport mode as well. We can toggle those in the menu we were in earlier, but the easiest way is to just take your finger, press mode P, like just tap it, and it goes to mode S, sport mode or high speed mode. Press it again, mode C. So all I'm doing is just tapping on the screen, P, S, C. It's the easiest way to toggle back and forth in the flight modes. Let's go ahead and do a return to home. On the left side of your uh, controller, there's a little home button that says H. Hold that and hold it until it initiates its return to home process. In the app, we set 180 feet as a return to home altitude, so it's gonna shoot straight up 180 feet, and it's gonna come back to its home location, where it took off, or where we set it earlier. Landing. And it's going to land. Now I'm going to look straight down with my gimbal to show you. There's our landing pad, and it's landing. Now if at any point you have an issue, you can hit that little X and you can prevent it from landing. I'm going to aim it down a little bit because it looked like it was missing. There we go. I'm just using my right thumbstick to sort of aim it down. Ease it on down onto the landing pad. On the upper right, we have 22% battery remaining. That's a good time to start landing anyway. 15-20% um, is where you start getting into that critical battery level territory and you don't want to be far away when you're getting that low with battery. You want to make sure you can fly back. There were a few breezes today that kind of kicked up some of the leaves and stuff, so I know it's kind of gusty up there. You don't want to lose this thing because it doesn't have enough power to fly back to you. All right, guys, well, that was the Mavic Mini Beginner's Guide. I mean, it's a simple drone. The Mavic 2 and the Spark and the Mavic Air, they're much more complicated with all the little intricacies. But with this lightweight, $400 sub 250 gram drone. It's a pretty simple and straightforward drone. That's why I think it's a great first drone for somebody. Just make sure you go through all the steps. Make sure you update that firmware. Make sure you go through that flight tutorial in a nice open space. Keep an eye out for obstacles around you and keep an eye out for battery life. And uh, just fly smart and fly safe. Also fly legal. This is sub 250 gram, but that doesn't mean you can do anything you want with it. You still have to abide by regulations in your country. The only difference is you don't have to register it in the United States. So, saves you five bucks. Still, be safe and thank you for watching. Also, check the link in the video description. If you purchase it through that link in my video description, I do get a small commission and it helps me to continue on with these videos and I would most appreciate it. If you have any questions, comment below. And until next time, happy flying.